All right, now we're looking at the structured singular value. So in the structured singular value, we're cons so the structured singular value is, is denoted as mu with a subscript delta bar, under bar, okay, for some matrix A that is in general n by n. So here we're, we're assuming A is an n by n matrix. It may be complex and we're defining mu. So what is mu? Mu is our uncertainty set. So here are some examples of uncertainty sets. Uh, so delta bar is our uncertainty set. So our delta bar is the set of possible deltas, in this case, deltas that are n by n matrices, such that in this case, delta is block diagonal. Or delta could be the set of complex n by n matrices where it is diagonal with scalars along the diagonal, not blocks along the diagonal. So these are examples of our uncertainty set. So remember, we were talking about um, the, the uncertainty the perturbation. And in this case, the uncertainty is in a set. And so if we know what that set is, and again, the set will be defined by the problem that we're working with. So if we're working with uh, a particular system and that system has an uncertainty in this element over here, then that could be represented by a, a situation like this. Okay, so this is our, these are our uncertainty sets. Um, some other uncertainty sets, the deltas could be, um, diagonal themselves, these block diagonal deltas could be um, these values themselves, and each of these is uh, basically some constant times the identity. So these are block, this is actually a diagonal matrix, and but the, the diagonal terms are repeated. Okay, so this is an example of a, an uncertainty set. Here's another uncertainty set. This is an example of a, in a three by three case, and this is my un uncertainty. So notice delta 1 has the same uncertainty in this row. Delta 2 has these two uncertainties, and then delta 3. And so this could be an example of our uncertainty set. Okay. So again, our matrix A may have uncertainty in all of these places. So remember, there's nine places here, 3 by 3. And uh, of these uh, nine places, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of them are uncertain. Okay. So so this is an example of another uncertainty set. So this this kind all of these kinds are the kinds of things we might work with. So delta under bar is our uncertainty set. Our delta is going to be an element in that uncertainty set. Okay, so this thing is kind of like we're putting layer upon layer of this problem. All right, so the mu, the structured singular value. So notice when we talk about the structured singular value mu we're only talking about one value, okay? One value. Okay, so what, how do we define that? Mu is defined to be 1 over, and now we have the solution to a minimization problem, the smallest of the singular values of delta, where delta is in our uncertainty set, and the determinant of i minus a delta is equal to 0. Okay? so. We're looking at the minimum of the maximum and the inverse of that. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. When you when, uh, when you see this the first time, you're probably going, what in the world is that even talking about? Yes, exactly. That's how that's how most of us feel when we see it. So don't feel like uh, you're you know you're alone in this. We're with you. We're, huh, we're definitely with you on this. So um, so that's the definition. And unless there is no delta in the uncertainty set that makes this determinant zero, in which case we define the, so this dot, this colon equals basically means defined to be, so in that case, the structured singular value is defined to be zero. Okay, so this is, this is our structured uncertainty, and it is a function of the matrix A. Okay, so it as a function of a matrix A, and of our uncertainty set. Okay, so that is the definition of the structured singular value. So here's the theorem associated with that. Well, we've already seen in theorem 5.2 that 
if we just look at the two norm for any n by n matrix, then we know the answer. Okay? It's 1 over the largest singular value of A. Now, if we restrict our attention, instead of being any complex matrix to an uncertainty set, then we have this is our answer, 1 over mu. And so the question is, what's the difference between mu of the uncertainty set and sigma 1 of A? So what's the difference? Well, I'll tell you one thing. Computing this is a lot more complicated than that. So we already have seen that computing singular values is more complicated than computing eigenvalues. But this is even more complicated than that. So that's definitely one difference. Well, let's, let's look at some properties of the structured singular value of mu. So here I'm going to define B delta. Okay, B delta um, is the B here is actually referring to a ball. <laughs> ball, what do you mean by a ball? So this is the delta in the uncertainty set where the largest singular value of that is less than or equal to 1. Okay, so this is actually what we mean by a ball. It has, it, you can think of, if, if you think of sigma max being like a radius, then this is, has radius less than or equal to 1. Okay, and so the, the, the value of this is that we can now say mu, so notice that here, this is not just any complex, this is not just any delta in the set. This is, the, this is restricting our values in the set to values that have magnitude less than or equal to 1. So remember, when we, when we looked at computing mu delta, it was associated with any element in the set. Now we're restricting our attention to elements in the set that have magnitude less than or equal to 1. Okay, so we can think of not just the, the whole set, but a ball in that set. And so one way to work with the structured singular value is we, we just look over the delta in that set and we compute the spectral radius of A times delta. Okay, the spectral radius of A times delta. So that's, that's what we're looking. So we're restricting our attention to the ball, and we're now, instead of just looking at the singular value or 1 over that minimization problem, we now look at the spectral radius of A times delta. So this is another way of computing the structured singular value. It's not actually that much easier. <laughs> so here are some more properties about the structured singular value. If I scale my matrix by A, it scales the structured singular value by the absolute value of that. But the structured singular value of A is not a norm. It turns out you can go through and show examples where uh, the structured singular value does not satisfy the triangle inequality. If the structured singular value of A is strictly less than 1, then, then I minus A delta determinant is non-zero for all uh, uncertainties in the set. And if I minus A delta is not equal to zero for all uncertainties in the set, we can go through and show just the opposite, that the mu must be less than or equal to one. So this is a, a necessity and sufficiency to say that this being equal to zero means that the structured singular value must be less than one for all, for all values in that set. So this is helpful, important. In general, there's no straightforward way to compute the structured singular value. There isn't a, a MATLAB command for it. The value, however, can be computed in certain special cases. Okay, uh, So, for example, if you have simple or small matrices, then you can kind of do it by hand. If you have a single-valued uncertainty, that is, if there's only one unknown scalar value, then, then we can do that fairly straightforward. If... Um, we have full block uncertainty, and in which case the structured singular value is just uh, 1 over the uh, singular value, largest singular value of A. And dyads. If the uncertainty happens to be a dyad, then we can actually work with that as well. Otherwise, bounds on the, on the structured singular value can be obtained. So here is 
a particular example of computable mu, where we where we can actually find us find uh, how to compute mu. In the event that the uncertainty set is just a diagonal element with a single uncertainty, single value, where delta so where delta is between zero and one in magnitude. So again, it's complex. So between being between zero and ones means you have actually inside a unit disk, right? So that's the uncertainty set. And in, in the event that our uncertainty is this, uh, then computing the norm of D basically gives us the largest singular value of delta, but that's just equal to the little delta, which is less than or equal to one. And so we have this for all S in our uncertainty set. So for any uncertainty in the uncertainty set, this equals zero means it's this, and this, if delta is not zero, then I can actually write it out this way. And so if delta is not zero, and yet all of this is equal to zero, that means the determinant of delta inverse i minus a is zero, which means that for lambda equals delta inverse, we have this being an eigenvalue of a. And so we can go through and show then that the structured singular value is in fact the spectral radius of a okay so in in this case why can't delta be zero in this case um, if delta was zero then the determinant of this would be one it couldn't be zero so that's why the delta can't be zero so so therefore we can take the inverse of it okay so in this case in this very special case, where our uncertainty is a diagonal matrix, then, um, and it's with the same constant value along the diagonal, then in that case, the struct structured singular value boils down to the spectral radius of the matrix. So that's the, that's the easy case. Okay, in the event that delta is, an, is a general matrix, full matrix, we have already seen the solution to this problem is associated with this, the, the uh, um, largest singular value. A dyad, is so suppose now that our uncertainty is a dyad. Mm, I'm sorry, suppose that our A matrix is a dyad. And suppose that our uncertainty is diagonal okay so as a dyad a can be formed from two vectors like this and so we know that the norm of a is equal to the norm of u and the norm of v uh, u and v are not necessarily orthonormal or anything like that so if we have a diagonal delta then this quantity is equal to i minus u v adjoint times delta but this I can rewrite this because anytime we have I minus a some a product I can rearrange the product and still have a valid uh, determinant and so I'm if I rearrange this if I move for example this over to the other side this is a row this is a matrix this is a column that becomes a scalar that product becomes a scalar and and so this determinant is equal to this quantity here but this quantity here can be shown to be equal to this sum because again this is a diagonal matrix and so the delta k's are the values along the diagonal so we have this expression so all of this must be equal to zero which means this sum must be equal to one okay so we have that situation so it can be shown that the minimizing delta i occurs when all the uncertainties are equal to each other in magnitude not necessarily in sign but in magnitude and then and all of them are equal to this okay so in, in other words uh, remember that sum still needs to equal one and so if these guys are all equal to each other we can show this in which case the mu is given by this which is this quantity here so in the event that we have a dyad and diagonal delta delta then we have a formula for mu in that case so it turns out we can go through and show that in general, the the uh, if delta is in um, in these various sets, 
minimizing over a larger set gives a smaller minimum. So the diagonal with just the constant along the diagonal, that's a subset in general uh, of more general matrices, uh, structured matrices. And this is the case when we have full, a full matrix. So this set is contained in that set, which is contained in this set. So if we're minimizing, minimizing over this set is going to give us a larger, since this is a larger set, this will in general give us a smaller singular value. This will give us uh, than this, and this will give a smaller value than that. So we have, we end up having this uh, nesting of values. The structured singular value is in between the spectral radius of the matrix and the norm of the matrix. So this is what we have in terms of our, in terms of our uh, bounds on the structured uncertainty. So we know that our structured uncertainty will always be between these two values. So, whew, it's complicated. It is complicated. This is so, so in this particular lecture, I'm I'm keeping it short because I want you to be able to go back and try to understand what this is talking about. And I'll give some examples coming up here. Stay tuned.